dear students, um, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And we are continuing our um, lecture. Uh, this is another video uh, from the class, which is product design, product and design, product design and development. And uh, we are continuing our uh, presentation of the how to set final specifications of our product. We have completed um, two tools and steps in the method of uh, setting the final specifications and now we're going to talk about the, talk about the third one which is refine the specification using trade-offs so at this stage we should have had our models uh, technical models a couple of them and we know how to set up these models and we know what is our um, target metric that we are trying to find the specification the final specification for and also we have developed our cost model and we looked around onto our um, bill of materials so we and we know what are our margins the low and the high uh, limits of our, the costs so after doing these two steps we can start um, refining and doing trade-offs so trade-offs it's based on it's a it's considered cost implication of choosing a final specification value using the technical models and the cost models that we have created so far and in order to perform trade offs, there is a tool that we use called competitive maps. And these competitive maps are in general uh, a way um, to support our decision making process. And so that we can make a decision based on um, informed, uh, you know, it's an informed decision based on real data, not arbitrary. So uh, we, in order to create, to construct the competitive maps, we need to create a chart with an x and y axes and here we have we can place our product or actually first before we place our product we need to place all the competitive products uh, along two dimensions selected uh, from the set of metrics uh, or the uh, values that we would like to identify you can create a large number of these charts and I encourage you to create as many as possible for your product. So your X axis should be one of the metrics and Y axis should be another metric. I would always like to be able to design these charts by using one metric, one technical metric and another cost related metric. So before we go into this, there's an example that I will show you. But if I had, if I was talking about the example that I'm showing you now on the screen, so you have the conscious, 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 ah, I can't spell that, pronounce this, uh, how crunchy your uh, candy bar or uh, waiver would be and in relation to how much chocolate is in that bar. So you can see that you have Kit Kat and Nestle, Hershey's, and you can see, you can, this, you need to place all the competitors. So you, these uh, graphs should come up from your benchmarking. So once you identified or, or placed all these competitors, you can see where uh, is your opportunity to place. Now, this is a general uh, setup, but if you want to be more specific and look at these um, competitive map maps from a quant in a qu quantitative uh, setup, this is another example where this is a, a competitive map for the ballpoint pen, pen. And you can see that I have on the y-axis the cost and the x-axis is the line uniform uniformity error. This is what I like to do to create a chart. One of the axes will be cost and the other axis will be something, a metric that we are going to measure. And I hope that you can do these to your um, projects and make sure that when you do these uh, charts, you place all the competitors on it. And then you have this line, this uh, trade-off curve that can tell you if I will have um, the error uh, smaller, the cost will be higher. If I have larger errors, the larger error in the line unif uniformity error, the cost will go down. This is very important to see where can you do the trade-offs in your setup. To be more precise, I will go back to the example that we talked about the bike suspension, the mountain bike. 
And here we have a competitive map that shows you the estimated manufacturing cost on the y-axis and on the x-axis you have a score all on Monster. And the score on Monster is a, is a performance um, indicator where the, the lower this value, the higher the performance that you're getting from your product. And you can see that you have um, the rocks die and this, all of these are competitors. You can see these two boxes here, <coughs> excuse me. So one of the boxes is your ideal value and the other box your marginal values. You can see that the marginal values are much more forgiving. So we have a larger range for the marginal values. The ideal values are the ones that everybody trying to achieve. It's hard to achieve, but this is the sweet spot that everybody is trying to work and get into. Now, you have these two trade-off curves and you can see that I can, if I wanna be on one of these curves, I can, uh, I need to, in order to in reduce the cost, right, I have to have a higher sc score on Monster. So I am giving, r losing performance. Creating these uh, figures need to come from benchmarking. There's a lot of steps uh, in order to do them. I would encourage all of you uh, to, do, to create in your groups as many as possible of these charts that can show different uh, metrics on the axes and this will give us a good estimation so if you are let's say talking about strength uh, you can put strength here you can put the cost there and you can see what what is your um, curve will look like the trade-off curve will look like in this uh, stage uh, okay so here's the thing we would like to see if we can beat the trade-off um, curve so can we get uh, and make balance for our, our product. Uh, these maps can be constructed directly from the data obtained from competitive benchmarking and also you need to create for your project between three to four of these maps. Uh, you need to select a handful of critical metrics though um, and compare it to the cost. Uh, also another note, uh, this is a way that will provide performance advantage relative to the uh, competitive products. So you can see where your product will be um, as compared to all the other products available. Uh, now, if you have a mature product, so if you're working in a big company uh, and we are having, we have a big team for the design and development, we can do something called co-joint analysis. And these analyses are based on customer surveys. So we will give, we will create a hypothetical scenarios and we will ask uh, end users and customers to tell us what do they um, perceive as you know acceptable uh, performance or acceptable value for the metrics uh, for example you can however however these when you ha when you do the conjoint analysis with customers you need to be careful to make everything as general and as clear as possible. So you can come up with, um, you know, some comparison or schematics that compares the fuel economy and the price of the automobile for electrical cars. So this is you need to make to be to be sure that it is a very simple uh, as much as much as possible. The good about the good thing about also the competitive maps is that it can give you an estimation of the market share that you could target with your product. So there's a lot of uses for the competitive map maps. I would suggest that for all your teams to do two or three of these competitive maps uh, after selecting key uh, metrics. Thank you, until next time.